Hello, DJ. Emily, <laughs> take three. Guys, we're trying our best. We are. We're so, honestly, the um, feedback yeah. that we've gotten has been beyond my wildest expectations. Oh, yeah. I, I genuinely, I said this last episode, I didn't think anyone, any of my friends would listen. And I didn't think the ones who did would really like it. But the feedback we've gotten, unless people are just like blowing air up my, then like it, they actually enjoyed it, which makes me really happy. Yes. And we're surprised, Mm -hmm. just like you guys all are, that (laughs) maybe it's not the worst thing to listen to. Yeah. And so we kind of just want to start off with like a specific shout out. We do. Yeah. Shout out to whoever is listening in Germany. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we sure do. We sure hope you come back for more. Mm-hmm. But the fact that with one episode and a teaser, we're already international. In, guys, this is you. You are listening to an international podcast. And so we just want to hit you with a guten tag. Guten tag, air German person. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and thank you to those. We had one um, just really awesome person tell us how many um, people she had sharing her location. Yes. So we appreciated that. Um, and we had one or two other comments as well. Did have a comment from a friend asking for more dinosaur stories. Mm-hmm. Which, I'm going to be honest, we probably won't do... Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do like a. No, I don't want to do a dinosaur. I don't want to do a dinosaur episode. Anyway, that's okay. We'll figure it out. And we want to say to those of you who listened to episode one and were like, "This was fun, but a little rough." That's how we felt. It was really fun. Honestly, both of us we were just talking. Some of the most fun we've had in a long time. Like genuinely looking forward to recording another episode. Mm -hmm. It's a little embarrassing to talk about with people, mm-hmm. for me, but just in the do. sense that I'm like, I'm not qualified to make a podcast. Yeah. It's kind of weird to hear that people are listening to me just blather when I'm not there. Yeah. But the support means more than the embarrassment does. Hmm. I like so, that. So, you know what? We're and just going to keep trucking. We are. And, and we bought mics, so hopefully the audio experience is slightly better. And you know what? If you saw our setup right now, we're <laughs> each an individual blanket for it, mm-hmm. trying to reduce the echo. Yeah, we're trying, you guys. I think what we're learning is we might need to record not in Emily's basement. We'll figure it out. But anyway, thank you for listening. We're trying to improve things. So hopefully, not only the audio experience, but the into no, the... The content experience. That's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully, the audio and content experience just keep improving. That's our goal. We would love for that to happen. Ooh. We, what we would love is to have enough money to get, like, real mics so we can not even worry about sound. So if you are bothered by the sound of this podcast, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. only you can solve that. Mm-hmm. By... Writing a letter to your favorite business and telling them to sponsor us. We would definitely do ad read. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we just don't have anyone who Especially wants. for someone like like Athletic Greens. Um, true, true, true. Uh, Stamps.com. Yeah, Sugar Bear Hair. Sugar, I haven't heard that one. Jovi. Jovi, I've heard, yeah. Yeah, Jovi. Yeah. Any I don't support their business, but I will read an ad for them. Oh, was that the gross soda we had? <laughs> no, that was Olipop. Guys, Olipop's a scam. Ugh, don't gross. drink it. It's horrible. Gross. Okay, we've done quite the intro, so we're going to get started because we know you all are wanting... <laughs> Unless you guys meet. comment... Oh, and I should <laughs> say this. Comments... If you want to comment on the podcast, you can go to your momshome.com, one word, and comment. Yes. Um, that's where we'll see. That's where we'll respond. We know you can't comment on Spotify or yeah. Apple Podcasts. You can rate. And review. And review. But if you need a comment, 
you can either write in on the e- on the website mm-hmm. or honestly if you're listening you probably have DJ or I's phone number so yeah. just send us a text. Yeah. But bonus if you if you comment on the website then other people might comment the same thing. True and we'll probably give you a shout out. We'll definitely give you a shout out. Anyway, um, so yeah, if, so if you want longer intros, then comment on the site, and we'll make the intros even longer. But this feels really long and tedious. So. We probably will cut out a chunk of this, maybe? <laughs> I Who doubt knows? it. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a, a big moment trying to get the audio to work, so we're just like still getting in the flow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was um, honestly like 20 minutes. Just it, Oh, more. It's probably like... 25 or 30 minutes just trying to get everything ready. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really boring intro. <laughs> ah, whatever. Um, shall we get to our next segment? Good. We- Reality recap. <laughs> I was going to do like a... Oh, you can uh, do it. I don't know how to. I was going to do like a drum roll. Oh. Or like a... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah, that one. Ready Air go. horn. I can probably get an air horn in there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, I bet there's a free air horn. So we'll just do a quick reality recap. All I'll say is I love everyone at this point. Um, I don't love Shayna. No, okay, I love all the couples. Oh, all the couples, yes. Yeah. And I'm genuinely rooting for most of them to succeed. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Are there four couples? There's only four I can think of. I think so. Yeah, and then I am too. I th- there's one that I'm, I'm not sure if it will, which is um, Mallory and Sal. Oh, true, true, true. I don't think they're going to last. Yeah. But other than that, like, I don't hate Shane anymore. Oh, and I'm not sure if Shake and Deep Deep Tea mm-hmm. will make it, which True. is unfortunate. But I've come around to Shake. Like yeah. I actually genuinely like him. No, I agree with that. Yeah, and I don't I don't dislike Shane anymore. Oh, I can't stand him. Oh, still. I mean, he grew on me a little bit because he defended his girl with the guy, the girl she he truly loved. Right. But I still think he's weird, and I, he still weirds me out, and, like, I think he's on cocaine. Uh, he, he honestly might be. Or he just, like, has never interacted with humans. Yeah, or just, like, has... You know what he reminds me of? Tell me. A real-life Tarzan. Like, someone who has never interacted with humans and is now, like, trying to figure out how to deal with humans. Your ability to distill the essence of a person <laughs> is in- unmatched. Oh, Incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Like the way he just like yeah. is always like crawling around or like doing weird stuff or like he stares at people like he doesn't quite understand what's going on. He is like a real life Tarzan meeting Jane for the first time. I can't. I can't agree more. I, I have <laughs> nothing to add because that was just perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, so we will watch the wedding episodes. Well, the rest, of, I think we have four epi- three episodes left. Yeah. So we'll watch Plus those. Plus the reunion. Yeah. So we'll watch those sometime soon, and by the next episode, yeah. we'll be done. Yeah, and then we'll give you our full thoughts. So, um, spoiler alert, should have been said before this, because we spoiled <laughs> some stuff, if you haven't watched it. Yeah. So, DJ, I have a question for you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me. What would be your dream reality show? Well, Emily, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, so, first of all, I actually think Love is Blind is, like, really close to my ideal. Okay. Um, Just, like, pure garbage. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I love The Circle. Um, but there's something... Like, I think The Circle is a great reality show as well. But there's, it's just, it's pure, but, like, maybe too pure. Whereas Love is Blind has a little bit of that, like, not pure drama. Like, you're not yeah. rooting for everyone. It's not perfect. 
I that's valid. Yeah, and I like that in a reality show. There need to be villains, and there's really not in the circle. I think I like the circle more than Love Is Blind because mm. you learn about each individual more. Mm. I feel like the progression with Love Is Blind is so quick now that I'm like I don't really know anything about this. That's fair. But the circle, you truly just want people like in the emotional roller coaster. Yeah, especially the last season with the 18 year old. Like he really went through it. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like the circle. I started a reality show the other day. Uh huh. <laughs> now I know that seems like I didn't watch together. It wasn't worth it. Okay. So I. What's it called? Joe Millionaire. Huh. No. So me and my sister started it. There's two men. And one is a millionaire. One has like a normal job. Okay. And there's 25 women there dating both of them. And they don't know which one's rich and which one's not. Ooh. So in theory, it sounds like, wow, this is fun. Because you get to figure out. Yeah. I mean, the guy who's rich is rich because he's a farmer. So he can like pass off like common folk. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so. Not great. It wasn't great because the girls didn't go in. They didn't go on the show to date a millionaire. They just went on a dating show. Oh. And so, so then the judge is like, or the host is like, well, one of them is rich and one isn't. And the girls were like, okay, I mean, obviously I want to be with the rich one, but. They didn't know the premise of the show from the start? No. Oh. Yeah, that's odd. Because it feels like. Well, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a right way to do that show, which feels terrible which is you bring on a bunch of gold diggers and they have to figure out who the yes millionaire i think is. we could make a better version of it yeah dude we should produce a reality show <laughs> so my dream reality show is i think more like the circle i think the concept of finding love is so like ridiculous to me it is in a reality show that i usually feel like it's it like is junky and doesn't produce good shows and unfortunately like it just kind of feels fake like love is blind seems to have produced two marriages yeah last season who knows how many this season and one on and off relationship so it feels like there's something real there but the bachelor no longer feels real it feels like everyone's on there to get a a social media following uh uh-huh um so yeah but I, I just, my, I think my ideal is a dating show. And it's a, it's a, it can't be too junky. Like The Bachelor just, I love The Bachelor. But it doesn't feel real anymore. No. So there has to be an element of realism, a potential of finding love. And there has to be some dynamic which allows for villains to get made. Actually, that's why I love Bachelor in Paradise more than Bachelor. Mm, is because villains. it feels real. It's all of these people who already have their fame who go among other people in kind of the same social the status same tier. and get to try to date. And I, yeah, I love Bachelor in Paradise. Um, I will say probably the best reality show <laughs> is Provo's Most Eligible. Oh. But that is only because we went to college in Provo. Yeah, and it is... Just so awkward. It's so uncomfortable. Like, it's not... That one, for if you don't know, it's The Bachelor, but it's set (laughs) in our college town. So everyone is between 18 and 24. Yeah, and they're not looking to get engaged. It's finding a girlfriend. Yeah, it's like the search to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And it's like, it's so bad. And so they, like, wear ball gowns, but you can tell they got them at, like, Macy's as opposed to, like, designers. On the bench. It's, it's it's fantastic. Great. And it's on YouTube. I yeah. hope there's a season three. I can't imagine why there wouldn't be, except that three years have passed. And maybe the people who made it don't care anymore because they were also in college. Yeah. And now one of them's semi TikTok famous, right? Yeah. So why do you? Yeah. Why would you? you got the talk. Why do you need the YouTube? The tube. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's somewhere between. Bachelor in Paradise and Love is Blind. Like, there has to be a real chance of love, but then because you're, like, stuck with people, villains emerge. Okay, yeah. valid. Yeah. What is... Oh, we got yours. It's circle-esque. It's, it's more social. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I do like that. I do feel like that's kind of evolved to be like everyone catfishes, but I still think it's kind of fun. Yeah, the catfishing element of the circle falls flat for me. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares if they're a catfish? Yeah. Yeah. They still made themselves likable. Yeah. And they're like constantly searching for. Yeah, it's bizarre. Speaking of dating shows, dating topics. You wanted to talk about dating. I did want to talk about dating. Oh, great transition that we did there. Uh, yeah, I did want to talk about dating. I want to talk about a number of things. We had a discussion last oh, week. Oh, dear listeners. <laughs> Me and DJ don't disagree on a lot. No. But, but we had a disagreement we last did. week. First of all, let's explain. Yes. So, I, so I'm going to be honest. I don't know if this exists outside of the LDS world, but in the LDS world, there's something called a post-date text. It does exist because I had some okay. people from high school. Okay, who commented. great. That. Then that whole explanation is unnecessary. But anyway, I think you should only send a post-date text if you're interested in the person and looking to go on a second date. And I was always taught and under the impression that you send a post-date text after every date to be polite and show your gratitude. But the content of that text would be what would insinuate whether or not you want to go on a second date or not. Yeah, and I'm just of the opinion. Cut them loose. Cut them loose. And two, like the dating world is full of people overthinking things. If you could send the simplest message. And if they want to go out, they'll read it as like a... Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's valid. Anyway, so we ran a poll. I don't want to tell people the results of that poll because I want people to tell me, what do you think? Comment below. <laughs> Does the post-date text mean... You're interested yeah. in a second date mm-hmm. or not? Yeah. And do you send a post-date text even when you're not interested? Yeah. I'm just curious to see because I feel like it's just awkward, especially if it's someone you're going to see again. Yeah. Again, as DJ said, we're Latter-day Saints, so we go to church with the people that mm-hmm. we date usually. Yeah. So if... Someone takes me on a date, and that was fine, but I don't want to go out again. I just don't say anything, and then I interact with them in person. And yeah. we just pretend that night didn't happen. Listen, uh, someone that I've taken out was at our activity tonight. Not awkward at all. Neither one of us sent a post-date text. But did you acknowledge each other? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we acknowledge each other. We've talked since then. Yeah. Amicable. We both didn't want to go out with each other. So, but what if one of you did? Wouldn't that have been awkward? Yeah, yeah. I've definitely <laughs> been in that situation. When a girl sends back a text like, "I'd love to do this." Oh, I've been in that situation. I've been in the other situation. That's less awkward for me because mm-hmm. then I'm in the position of power. So but then w- you just are like, "Yeah, thanks," and you don't mm-hmm. ask them out again. But when, when I send a post date text and the girl or like. The girl doesn't send a post-it text, and I'm interested. Then it's awkward, because I'm like, oh, she didn't want to go out again. Get that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry to people who have received post-it texts. <laughs> from Emily. From me. And then my behavior didn't match my post-it text, yeah. I guess. I say this like I go on a lot of dates <laughs> and a lot of people have getting post-date texts from me. Yeah. But. Yeah. Comment down below. Yeah, comment below. We'll see if you match with the people on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll tell you the results of the poll next week. We should, here's what we need to do. We need to start, I hate that I'm saying this. I hate it so much. An Instagram? Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, go follow our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'll monitor it. You'll what? I'll monitor. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to. You're going to be completely in charge. Yeah. I'll do Guys, I'm kind of anti-social media. So the fact that I'm even suggesting we have an Instagram <laughs> is like truly something. The big step. Um, do you, you have a dating profile? I have, a da- I have one dating profile. Like I'm on one app. Oh, one app. Yeah. We're both <laughs> I don't on. Have multiple personalities <laughs> on this app. <laughs> we're both on the, the LDS dating app. Called Mutual, which is a great name. Great name. Have you ever, speaking of, have you ever seen the same girl on Mutual multiple 
Like she has multiple accounts. No. Are there boys? Oh my gosh. Yes. There are some red flag Robbies. <laughs> Wait, let me ask you something. Have you, when you were in Provo, did you ever um, swipe on Llama Boy? Llama Boy? That's a thing, right? Never heard of him. Shirtless Boy? There's a, there's a boy that most girls talk about. I think it's Llama Boy. Okay, so, yes. <laughs> there is, so recently, within the span of one week, the same guy's profile popped up on my feed, and I matched with him all three times. Oh, so it's three separate profiles. It's three separate profiles, and he was in a different city. So that's kind of creepy. And so then knowing me, I messaged all three at the same time, <laughs> and I said, do you have another account? <laughs> and he unmatched me on two and messaged me back on one of them and was like, oh, hey, what's up? As How? if I didn't just catch him in his lie. As if I haven't spent the last five years of my life watching Catfish and knowing <laughs> that people make fake profiles, and I called him out. He's really trying to find a wife, if, I guess. <laughs> or he doesn't even look like that. But you have issues with a lot of dating profiles. I do. I, here's, here are, oh my gosh, DJ's tips on dating profiles. Because I have a lot of issues with dating profiles. Number one, like it's a suck. I hate that I have my dating profile because I'm really bad at texting. So like the someone messages you and you don't message. Yeah. And just like, I'm really bad at conversing over text. So like, I don't know. It's so hard for me to start a conversation with someone. So basically here are my, here, here are my qualms. One, it feels like a lot of people don't understand dating profiles <laughs> and that like they, they, they put a dating profile is your best foot forward. Amen. And some people are putting pictures of them like not their best photos when they're not fully awake or like, <laughs> I'm like, what, why are or like, here's what really bothers me when they put childhood pictures. Oh yeah. Why? I'm like, are you pedophile hunting? Like it would be weird if I swiped up on this picture. Also like what, what is the advantage for me to see how someone looks as a kid? No. Our kids aren't going to look this same. Also, I'm probably not going to marry you. I just want to go on a date with you. So, like, I don't True. care what you looked like as a child. Another I, thing on that vein. Yeah. A solo picture of your dog. No. I'm not. Every. I don't care. Picture in your profile should showcase your face. You should not have more than one or two photos with a group. Yeah. Because then I can't tell who the heck you are. And if it's a group photo and there's someone better looking Ooh, than you in that red picture. Flag. <laughs> Do not post that picture because all I'm seeing is, wow, she's cute, but her friend is cuter. And I swipe down, which is shallow, but that's, but what, that's dating what a dating app are. is. Yeah. Anyway. Anyone who's like, I don't like dating apps because it's so superficial, like that's the whole purpose. Yeah. And like, like I say, I have been on four dating app dates, all of them bad. And so like, it, it probably won't work for me. And I, here's an, I never ask someone out that I know through the app. So if you know someone in real life and you match on the app, you I've stopped even swiping up with people I know. If I, I know them. I swipe up on everyone I know. Uh, no, I, not I used everyone. to do that. But I've just decided, like, I don't want any, any wires to get crossed. That's valid. And... If I'm interested in someone, I have a policy. If you know them, you, you have to ask them out. Real life. In real life. Meaning over text or in person. You can call if you're a nerd. Also, it's been said before. I'll say it again. We don't care. No, I do not care. I will not speak for the female population. I do not care. If you have a dead ear I agree. in your photo, or hot take, a gun, wipe down. Yeah, I think the gun That's is... specific to me. I know some women are like, swipe up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine that there's anyone who thinks a, de a dead animal adds to a profile. I think they're... <laughs> I've heard, I've heard differently. <laughs> Comment below <laughs> if a dead fish or a dead deer... Gives you an automatic swipe up. Uh, there are people like that? 
Yeah, people like it. People like, like to know that the man would provide. Yeah, and like I get that. But I don't I'm know why you though. have to have the dead animal there. Like, I think a picture with the gun or you and your hunting fatigues shows that. And because there are just tons of women who also have dead animals. And I'm like, one, you've been out in the wilderness for hours. You don't look good. So that's a check against you. Also, <laughs> there's a dead thing in your picture. Yeah. That's another check against you. Like, I don't care if you have a picture with a gun. But look good in the picture. This is a dating profile, not like a a hunting magazine. I, you, I don't. And well, and for me, I'm like, if you have multiple pictures hunting or fishing, yeah. As we talked last week, I'm not going to be in attendance. <laughs> so why am I signing up, hang out with yeah. someone who does things I don't like? Well, to but do? that's more of like a lifestyle. Like that's True. just you're like, oh, this lifestyle clear wouldn't fit. I would be fine with someone who likes hunting. I just. You have five if pictures. If your wife went hunting every week, would you just be like, would you go with her? Oh, absolutely. That shocks me. I think I'm way you more outdoorsy. Oh my gosh, listener, listener, I need you to know, <laughs> you just said that, but he, <laughs> he wouldn't walk through the lawn to get into my house today because he didn't have shoes socks on. socks on. Because he only had socks on. I didn't want my socks to get dirty. And you're going to go out and hunt and kill and dress an animal? Yes. I love the outdoors. I do too. No, I don't. But <laughs> you like, don't. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've, I've been trying to go hunting for a long time. but like You I'm live just, in Washington, D.C.? No. Whenever I go to Utah, I'm oh, like, okay. oh, let's go hunting to one of my cousins. But I'm always too busy. Anyway. Um, now I want to get into one of my dating theories, which is you're always someone's second choice. Wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> and I bring this up because on Love is Blind, there's someone who's literally this dude's second choice. Like he wanted to propose to one chick. He did propose to someone else. Well, he said to her, if I were to propose. Oh yeah, that's true. And, uh, didn't have a ring or anything. And she said, no, I can't. And they cried. And then he proposed to the other girl. Like the next day. Yeah. So, anyway, she's literally his second choice. And I brought up to Emma, I was like, well, anyone that I marry will be my sixth choice at this point because I have picked. Okay, that's not true. I've broken up with a lot of women. Anyone I marry will be my second choice because my first choice dumped me. And I really hope she never listens to this because this is a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> If you guys know who this person is, send her the podcast. <laughs> we will bring her on as a guest. She has a boy's name. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, but anyone I marry, because I didn't choose to end that relationship, is a second choice to me. Okay. Right? So we've <laughs> talked about this. I don't think that's right. Right. I think if you are marrying someone, but still always like mm, could have been. Yeah. Then you shouldn't get married. Yeah. So yeah. if she, you marry her knowing she's your second choice. I mean, she is my second choice. And you hold on to that. Like, Oh, well, I'm not holding on to any. You're still viewing her as your, your first choice, but she's married. Yeah. Like, but I don't hold out hope for her, but I didn't but choose. But you still are comparing every girl you date. To that woman. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. So how is she still your first choice? Because I didn't choose to end that relationship. At that time. That's fair. It might, I might have. You might have. I might have. But I think to say your wife is going to be your second choice, I think ultimately she will be your first choice because it will be the only one that you've proposed to. Unless you proposed to that other girl. Did not. Did not. In fact... I say this, we dated for three months, right? So <laughs> it's not like some long okay. lost love. It's just the only person I've never, I didn't break up with. Everyone else I've dated, I've broken up with. But this chick ditched me. So that's why I say like, well, she was my, she, and I guess what I should say is she may have been my first choice. I take back my whole theory. This is the beauty of podcast, conversation and friendship. 
Yeah, because you're right. I didn't choose to marry her. No, you could have proposed. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. All right, so girl with the boy's name who I hope never hears this. You weren't my first choice. Hope you're having a great day. You're not DJ's first choice. Yeah. I hope, I hope you are having a great day. I hope the girl that is your first mm-hmm. one day listens to this episode. Oh, she will. And knows, wow, I, he was waiting for me. I think to marry me, you'll have to listen to every, every, you'll have to listen or watch or read every piece of content I've produced. Mm, I take that back. You'll have to listen to every piece of content I've produced. But like, I don't expect her to go back and read my blog archive. Yeah. Ladies, if you're interested, yeah, start listening now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Better to uh, up to date rather than have to go and listen to many hours of us talking. That's true. That's true. So like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe to be a chance. Get a chance to be DJ's first choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so glad we had this talk because now I won't feel bad when I no, go to marry shouldn't. someone. Should be my first choice. You had just as much control. In not being each other's first choice. That's not quite true, but like, I get what you're saying. And maybe we won't need the dating app after this podcast. Because someone will say to me, DJ, I want to be your first choice. Yeah. If that's you, oh, please don't. Please don't. I, I'm not going to lie. I... Uh... Are we about to have a revelation? No, just, I've expressed this to you before. I don't, I don't like being asked out by girls. <laughs> or like, yeah. have feelings expressed to me by girls. So like, please don't comment if you're into me. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. It's just like, n- never reciprocated. Girl, what? If you liked a girl... Yeah, but the chances of that are so slim. I rarely like people. But if you liked a girl and you guys were doing the flirty thing, but you were just taking too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she asked you out. Yeah, if it was clear. But most of the time I've been asked out by a girl, there is no indication that I like her. And she asked me out. If you are one of my friends listening to this podcast, you know I love the risk text. Ooh. DJ, I love. <laughs> no, I know text. this. We've had this conversation. So, like, I haven't sent risky texts in a while because yeah. there haven't been anyone that I'm interested been into. in. But in college, your girl sent texts from like 11 p.m. to like <laughs> 3 a.m. And I would be like, I like you, by the way. And then I would just put my phone on airplane mode and go to sleep. How do you do that? Chaos. I just lived in chaos. It's, and then my poor roommates would wake up. Shout out to Donna. Shout out to Michelle. And I'd be like, so I did something bad last night. <laughs> and they would just know I sent it. You had roommates named Donna and Shauna? <laughs> no. Donna and Chantel. Oh, Chantel. Yeah. Okay. So I did it all the time. I would ask people out. Via text. Dude, honestly. And like, then I just put my phone on airplane mode. And that is why my phone has been on airplane mode for like seven years. Yeah. Sometimes Emily doesn't text me back for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Because she doesn't get notifications because her phone is constantly on airplane mode. I've learned to accept it. But when, but when we were first becoming good friends and I text her and I'd be like, what the heck? We we're having a conversation. I guess not necessarily airplane mode. Do not disturb. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So risk text. If anyone listening to this wants to send a text to a boy it. or a girl that they like, do it. They need support. Tell me. Oh yeah. I, I have friends who I haven't talked to. Text down there and be like, "I'm about to send this text message. I need a confidence boost. Mm-hmm. Like, do it. What's the worst that happens? They say no. And also, they're also saying no right now because you're not doing anything. Right. So like nothing changes. Shoot your shot. Yeah. I and, believe in shooting your shot. And if they don't like you back, you guys stop hanging out. You really want to hang out with them anyway? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. I be- Yeah, I have 
I have competing views. I guess my view, because I, I, I believe in shooting a shot. I believe so hard in shooting yeah. a shot. If I don't get a post-date text and I'm still into the girl, I shoot my shot. And yeah, I you say, send that text. Do you want to go out again? And she says, sorry, I'm busy that day. And I say, liar, you're <laughs> definitely not busy that day. I haven't even given you a day. I just said, do you want to go out again? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so shoot your shot. Here's what I would say. Don't shoot your shot based on nothing. It has to be an inkling. If you just like see Listener, a cute boy no, across you, you the room. Don't. You don't have to wait for Andy. And to... If you just see a cute boy across the room and you've never talked to him, don't shoot your shot. Like talk to him. Okay, yeah, that's See valid. if there's rapport. Yeah. Yeah. And do the flirty thing. And then if you think there might be flirting back, do it. But if he shuts it down, don't do it. That's your sign. <laughs> I say this as, you know, send texts all the time. I don't. But yeah. if I had someone, I would. If you had someone you were into, you would. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to talk about Pete Davidson? What about him? Just like, what the heck? Oh, like that I love him? Wait, I didn't know you loved him. <laughs> I actually love Pete. I and I don't know, know why, because... I don't know why anyone would. Gross. He's gross. He looks like you'd catch something from him. Either <laughs> COVID or a se- sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> or just, he looks like you'd catch a fungus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like definitely some bacterial infection. Staph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for like as much money as he has... The fact that he, like, can't dye his hair. Wait, you well, don't like the blonde? I don't mind the blonde, but I it's not well done. What? It's not well done. Mm. So he probably but did it himself, Pete. right? I think so. Yeah. I thought the blonde looked really good. I mean, for Pete. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like, it's like a low... There's a, there's a low ceiling. Yes. And he's he hit close to it with okay. his blonde. But I love him. And I don't know why. I don't know why anyone does. Do I think he looks gross in the face? <laughs> like, like, if you ever go to the American History Museum, <laughs> they have goals of, like, through evolution, <laughs> oh, no. where, like, the bottom half of their face is too big for their top half yeah. of their face. Kind of pee. Yeah. But I just think he's probably so kind. Oh, and I think, because I, I've... I've thought about this a lot and I've talked to a lot of girls and like, I think that's what it comes down to is he just seems genuine. Yeah. Like I feel one of my things on my bucket list Mm -hmm. is to meet a celebrity in an organic way, Mm. not at a meet and greet, not at a concert, not at anything like that. I want to be walking down this or in Trader Joe's and see a celebrity. I feel like if I stopped Davidson on the street, he would have a real conversation. I don't know that he'd have a conversation, but he'd probably like he wouldn't be annoyed by funny. me stopping him. Yeah. If I stopped Kanye, he would probably like utter some gibberish in my face <laughs> and then like post twenty five things about how I was so rude on Instagram. I am obsessed with Kanye right now. His beef what? with Pete is the like, funniest side are you thing on? ever. What? Side are you on? Um, this is I'm gonna make on, or break our podcast right now. I'm on whatever side makes this beef go on forever. So Kanye's. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because it is. Did you you saw the Civil War poster he created? Yes, when right? he altered the Marvel poster. Incredible. Did you see the music video he released yesterday? It's claymation. Well, it's like part claymation, part real. I'm anti claymation. And then at the end. There's a claymation. Well, I think this Pete is in the whole thing, but at the end he buries him alive. It's, I, I he's it's, just like lost. He has, he's, and it's like kind of sad, but it's very entertaining. And it's also sad that given how much money he has, like no one's watching out for him. Well, like, there's I no mean, one. He, he does this by choice. Like he, yeah, yeah. Like he's had help, and he chooses not to continue with it because it messes with his creativity lockdown would you say this whole we've kept britney on lockdown this whole time and no one can put kanye on lockdown yeah 
It was just a double standard. Hashtag free Britney. Hashtag free Britney. Hashtag free Kanye, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love Pete Davidson. I think he's kind of gross. Yeah. I don't love his content. I don't watch any of it. I don't think he's that funny. But I just think he would be. I do too. Also, like, his dad died in 9 11, mm-hmm. so. A dad pass. He, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the only person that is allowed to make 9 11 jokes in my book. Agreed. And when he does, it's so funny. Yeah. That's like the only time I think. That, yeah. Basically, yeah, that's the only time. Anyway. Um, you just wanted to talk about Pete Davidson? Yeah, I just don't get it. You don't get why people like him. Women. Like, he has dated gorgeous women. Okay, so this is from a podcast that I listen to. Him probably was not happy married to Kanye for the last, mm. at least five years. Yeah. Do you think Kanye ever made her laugh? No. Mm-mm. And so he probably is just like, rebound, let's have fun with... With Petey. Who's like the complete opposite yeah. of Kanye. When like Ari was like in love True. with him. I mean, that was a, was a fast, explosive relationship. Yeah, that ended very quickly as well. Also, I just can't imagine. Because when he was dating Ariana Grande, he still lived with his mom. He still lives with his mom. Well, he recently moved out. Really? Yeah, so. That's too bad. I'm honestly sad about that. Same. I mean, maybe, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But I'm like, so when Ariana Grande hung out with Pete at his house, it was with his mom. Don't you love that? I do. Yeah. And I think that's another thing why I like it. I think you're right. It grounds him. Yeah. Let's hope he stays grounded now that he doesn't live with his mom. True. I think he's one that also is like aware of his mental health. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And his substance issues. Definitely. And doesn't like getting to that dark place. Oh, and I think you were saying you like the way he's tattooed, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, my secret shame. Yeah, which I think his way of tattooing is not You don't like attractive. the randomly placed tattoo? No. But like him, Harry Styles. Ooh. I don't like it. It looks like prison tattoos. Like, I'm all about, like, I think tattoos look good. Mm-hmm. But they gotta, they gotta look good. You can't just have like, I don't know. You just, you just like put, you don't just doodle on yourself. You know, anyway. I think either randomly placed or a whole sleeve. Yeah, and you like the sleeve with the with the cut off at the wrist. Yeah. yeah. So it actually looks like a sleeve. I think that's a. I think it's cool. Would I ever get a tattoo? No, because I can't give anything. I've thought about it, and I've like, there's just nothing that like. I can't I, even get a vanity license plate because I'm like, I don't know what I like that much. I think potentially the person I marry. I could get a tattoo that's meaningful about them. Because that's a relationship I'll have forever. Um, Your second choice, girl. My second choice. (laughs) But other than that, there's just nothing that I'm like... Like, I could get a tattoo about, like, Jesus or something, but that... I know people do that, and I think it's beautiful when they do. To me, it feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. Valid. Because that's, like, the only other thing, like... My family as well. But again, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't, why would I need a tattoo about them? I just go talk to them. I don't know. All right. I feel, feel good about the Pete thing. We figured that out. The tattoos, we figured out. Now we're going to get to what I think will be the only segment that we consistently do. Agreed. And that's rants, wrecks, and random questions. Uh, so do you want to start? Yeah. My rant for this week Slow walker. And this is, goes <laughs> off of what we talked about last week about bad drivers. Right. About bad walker. Yeah. So I work in D.C. Mm-hmm. one day a week. Yeah. And the metro now comes only like every 20 minutes. Yeah. So I can't miss it or right. else I'm screwed. Sure. So when I leave my office to the metro, your girl's hightailing it. Mm-hmm. And I get stopped. Getting out of their last class, nowhere to go. And I'm like, we have a walk sign, people. <laughs> get moving. 
And so I will dodge or then I get on the escalator and people are on both sides or oh, someone yeah. walking and cuts in front of me and then slows down. That's like, a post COVID thing. The escalator thing. It used to be to in DC, a strict rule. Yeah. Right is stand, left is walk. And people would yell at you. But post COVID, everything's out the window. It's like when you merge onto a highway you got to pick up your speed. Yeah. Because you can't merge in front of it, someone and slow down. Yep. Same with walking. If you are merging onto the sidewalk, better pick up your speed because I will step on your heel. I'll do it. And I don't care. Purposefully? No. Oh. I have actually never done that, but I would if people <laughs> stopped walking. <laughs> so that's my rant for the week. That's a good rant. Please walk faster. Yeah. Okay, here's mine. I'm just... I'm really mad at Jenna Marbles. Do you know Jenna? Yeah, I know who Jenna is. She took herself off the internet, and mm-hmm. it's every three to five months, I remember that she did that, and I get did really sad. you watch sad. her a lot? And it happened to be today that I did that. What? Do you watch her a lot? Oh, I used to watch her religiously. Really? Every episode that yeah, came I out. I didn't think she was that funny. Oh, my gosh. I, I just, and I truly do. I think she understood the internet in a way like basically no one else does. I thought her content was perfect. Like slow. She only did one post a week. Okay. Like most people who do well on YouTube um, post a lot. Yeah. She did one post a week. It was really long. It was really slow. And this was, I think this was before YouTube changed their algorithm to pay you based on time watched that mm-hmm. she was doing these long videos and you just like got to know her you got to know her dogs you got to know her boyfriend and i just thought she was so funny and just she did like the dumbest things like she painted herself to look like her chair and she did a great job and it was so funny and then the the mob came after her and she took herself down which at the time i was like you know what? Good for you. Empower. Mm-hmm. Empower to the you. Yeah. But now she I'm like. She was in control of whether or not she was on the internet. Yeah. Now I'm like, to- Jenna, you're being selfish. Come back. We need Interesting. you. I love her and I miss her so I know so a lot much. of people do. I just. Yeah. And I, I look thought, occasionally. She, nobody, basically no one has unsubscribed from her. She has the same amount of followers as the day she took herself off the internet. Everyone's just waiting for that blessed day. Oh, I, and I don't know if it's, I get less and less confident that's going to happen. How I feel about the One Direction. <laughs> you know, it's how I feel about fun. The band. Yeah. They broke up and they said, we're not breaking up. We're just taking time to pursue our own things. Do not lose hope. Is the Jonas Brothers broke up? That's true. And I sobbed. I had not been able to see him in concert. You you literally cried tears. Yeah, <laughs> I cried so over the Jonas Brothers you. three times. You what? I've cried over the Jonas Brothers twice because I couldn't go to their concert. One because it was on a Sunday. Second time because I was at camp. And guess what? Since they got back together, I've seen them in concert three times. Making up for every all three. single concert has been amazing. So I believe that fun will come back. One Direction, probably so not. That's my rant. It's, and it's not the rant I had from last week. I had saved one. Next week? Unless something oh, else comes up. Week. Because I just, today I got on YouTube, I went to my subscriptions, and you I had, saw her face, and I was like, I'm angry. And I've been thinking about it all day. My rec, my recommendation, is the movie Just Like Heaven. Just Like Heaven. Have you seen it? No. Not even oh heard of it. Oh my goodness. Classic early 2000s rom com. Okay. Reese Witherspoon. Great A actress. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Okay. This was pre Hulk when he used to be a rom com guy. Yes. He's in a coma and he's the only one that can see her spirit. Oh. And he has to find a way to get her body and her spirit to reunite. And guess what? They yeah. fall in love! <laughs> I watched it today. They just put it on Netflix. Okay. So good. Okay. If you don't seem interested, but I would recommend it. 
yeah, I, I mean, I'd probably enjoy it. Um, it doesn't feel like my kind of rom-com. Is it, it's a com. Yeah. Comedy. Napoleon Dynamite is in it. What? Then I might like it. So that's my recommendation. I think it's a very underrated rom-com. Everyone go watch Just Like Heaven. It's on Netflix. Hmm. My recommendation is also on Netflix, or it will be. Well, it is. It's called Drive to Survive. Oh, the F1 show? The F1 show. And season four premieres. It'll premiere two days after this episode comes out. Because I've decided, remember last time we said we'll release Wednesday through Monday? I've decided Wednesday. Wednesday's our release day. Anyway. So two days after that, this season four will come out. And it, it is so good. Like, I'm not a big sports guy. In fact, I would say I'm one of the least sportsy guys in existence. I'm in the lower 80 percentile of sport guys. But this show just grabbed me by the lapels and just shook me. It awoke. <laughs> Woke you up from yeah, that it, slumber. Yeah, it awakened something in me. Mm-hmm. And so I just recommend everyone give it a try, even if you're not into sports or race cars, because I certainly wasn't. But and you now, are now. Now I'm going to wake up and watch F1. Change my life. Mm hmm. That's what we call growth. That's what we call it something. We call it, yeah. Yeah. Broadening your mm-hmm. hobbies. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, tonight, has, tonight has been a lot as far as recording difficulties. Yeah, we've really struggled today. <laughs> and so I just need you all to know that if this podcast sounds even vaguely like it was recorded in one evening, then it's a miracle because <laughs> we have started four or five different times. Also... I'm not sure if this is the case, but if it sounds like we're progressively losing energy, we are. It's because it's 11 o'clock and we're 28 year olds, so we are normally in bed by now. Well, and we started at like nine <laughs> after like a social activity. So. I think we started recording at 9:45. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna have to cut all this out because it's gonna be too long. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, now. Something a little less deep. Yeah, which is something that we previewed last time, and many of you know about, and it's the year of the hot dog. 2022 is the year of the hot dog. It is the food of the year. Mm -hmm. Hop on board. Yes. Quick explanation. Yes. You have to eat as many hot dogs as the age you are turning. I am turning 28 this year. I need to eat 28 hot dogs by December 31st, 2022. So 28 hot dogs for you, 29 hot dogs for me. And that's the main rule. You have to eat that many hot dogs. Let me go into the consumption rules. Rule number one, you have to eat hot dogs. Rule number two, if it's a real hot dog, like a straight up hot dog, you can eat it in any form. It can be (laughs) shredded. It can be sliced. Shredded hot dog. (laughs) Can you imagine? <laughs> Just like, like string cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that is gross. <laughs> Just like you get like a, shredded hot dogs. <laughs> that would be so funny. That is funny. Um, Next time you host a cookout, you should be like, "Oh, I have hamburgers and hot dogs, and all of the hot dogs are shredded." <laughs> On each of the hamburgers, I shred a hot dog. <laughs> anyway, so hot dogs in any form. If they're real hot dogs, if it's a brat or a sausage, it has to be eaten in a bun or for our keto friends, this is keto friendly, (laughs) a lettuce wrap. If it's a veggie dog, also a lettuce wrap because we're friendly to our vegan and vegetarian friends, but only so friendly. Like you still have to pretend it's a hot dog. Yeah. And I, I guess I'll say this. If, (laughs) if you can only eat, if you're vegan or vegetarian for religious purposes, it can be sliced. If it's ethical or <laughs> health-wise, it has to be in a bun or a lettuce wrap. Also, what is slice? Sliced hot dog? 
Oh, like, like in mac and cheese. Yeah, 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 like in mac and cheese or in eggs. Yeah. Okay, but all of those things don't work for vegans. If it's a veggie dog. In their eggs? In their mac and cheese? I think there's a vegan mac and cheese. It, literally no one's going to care. No, <laughs> they part. might. Anyway. Anyway, so. so there's a religious exemption, but there is not an ethical or health exemption. I, okay, fine with that. I agree. <laughs> I mean, what is your not eating hot dog really doing to save the planet? I'll be honest. But. Yeah, yeah, anyway, absolutely. This is not a political podcast. <laughs> it's okay. We can make political statements like that. Um, here's the other thing. Merch. While we're struggling. We're really up. It's getting late. Okay. Also, this is a movement that is spreading across the country. Yes. We, we have, have participants in multiple states. Multiple states. And hopefully countries, if Germany picks up the pace. If Germany, we're looking at you. And, and I'll say, it's beyond just our friends. Oh, yeah. We have evangelists out there converting others to the year of the hot dog. Yes. Yeah. So, in order to help spread the news, mm -hmm. we are proud to announce, very excited to announce. You hear it here first. There will be 2022 year of the hot dog merchandise. Merch. There will be t-shirts. There will be water bottle stickers. That's what we've got so far. <laughs> <laughs> there will be t-shirts and water bottle stickers. And you better believe that they're going to look cool. Yeah. So if you're clanking around with the Nalgene, you can do it with a purpose now. Because you can spread the word of Year of the Hot Dog. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we are not giving these away. <laughs> they will no. come at a cost. Yes. But all of the money that we receive from these merch sales uh -huh. will go back into the podcast. Correct. And it will be to get better sound quality. Yes. Maybe to bring on a guest. It, Whatever I, it I takes. don't know why we'd pay our guests, but maybe. It, maybe we have to fly them in. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who are we flying in? I'm excited. Pete Davidson. Oh, my gosh. If we got Pete Davidson, I would die. Because it would mean that we were somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So. If Pete Davidson was on the podcast, would you feel comfortable asking him, like, why do you think women like you? Yeah. Because you're not that attractive. Or maybe I wouldn't add that part. Oh, yeah. It's just assumed. Yeah. That you're asking, if I'm asking because like, he's why not. Because, like, like, you wouldn't ask that to. Um, Harry Styles. You wouldn't ask that. It's, he's attractive. Exactly. Yeah. So, none of the money will go to me and DJ. Mm -mm. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. Into the pod. So, be looking. We will put out some samples. You guys can let us know what kind of stickers, what kind of t-shirts you're looking for. Yeah. Drop the link. Go start buying them to support. Yeah, support the pod. Get better audio quality. Um, I don't know what else we'd buy, but again, this is you, your money here is only helping you. Exactly. Also, they're going to be dope and everyone's going to be like, what's your, the hot dog? And you'll be like, well, it's this really cool thing where you eat as many hot dogs as the year you're turning. And they'll be like, that's sick. I'm going to jump on board. And you'll yeah. be like, okay, here's some other rules. Also, <laughs> it's March. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Correct. most of us are upwards of 25. You need to get started on your hot dog consumption. Mm -hmm. So I suggest just working them in. Mm -hmm. You don't need to stress. We still have summer with baseball games, yep. with cookouts, yep. all of that stuff. I, I just want to commend you on not calling them barbecues. Because it's not. A barbecue is when you eat barbecue. When you have hamburgers and hot dogs. It's a cookout. Okay, I didn't notice that I had made that distinction, but... Yeah, I just I commend it. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know I say both aunt and aunt? Ugh. It's my aunt and uncle, but I go to my aunt Jan's house. I get... I know. Anyway. <laughs> we should stop. We should, because this is <laughs> This has falling. gone on for a long time. It is falling fast. Just so that everyone knows, we reached the recording limit on GarageBand and had to start a new recording. So you're hearing something that was way cut down 
and um, we're both exhausted. So it's getting a little out there. So anyway, thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table, which we definitely did not say at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, if we may need to change the name. Yeah. We're, we probably it, can't go into that tonight. <laughs> nope. At some point, we will. Anyway, thanks for listening. We love you guys. I'm DJ. I'm Emily. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>